What we're thinking about now is a common language for characterizing different data sets. Let me say that again. Shape and modality, they're, they're a common set of vocabulary that so long as you can know what these words mean, as soon as someone says it, you don't need to use a long awkward phrase to describe what a data set is like. You can just say, oh, it means this and we all know what you're talking about. Okay? So we're going to talk about each of these in turn. I'm actually going to do it backwards. So let's start with modality. You might want to put this kind of in the middle of your page because we're going to have a few things branching off it. Okay? This idea of modality, as you might guess from the name, it's connected to the mode, right? Tell me again what the mode means. Most score. The most occurring score, the most frequently occurring, the most common score, okay? So the modality is about, well, how many of those are there? How many modes are there in your data? Now, so far we've been looking at, and even the one I just gave you this morning, um, so far we tend to look at data which has just one mode. One mode. So, very originally we call that unimodal, like a unicycle, right? So if there's just the one mode, there's just one score that's more common than all the rest, that's it, and this is what you often encounter. So no big deal, I don't think it warrants much more explanation. It's the other two which I wanna think about a bit more, and I'm gonna ask you in a second, I've got my own ones, but I'm gonna ask you in a second to help me work out some practical examples of this, because they're all over the place. It commonly takes place that there isn't just one mode. There isn't one dominant score, okay? Often, there's like two. So instead of being unimodal, again, be original and creative. Instead of being unimodal, you'd probably call this if there's two, bimodal, right? Well, you're actually jumping ahead of me, so we'll get to that a bit later. So bimodal means there's two modes, okay? Now, in all kinds of data, and I'll give you a really easy, I'll give you like the classic really boring example, but it's the textbook one, so I need to tell it to you. A set of data, if you have a look, uh, the one we actually just had a look at is not a bad um, instance of it, will have naturally occurring at two most like high peaks in the data, right? So if you wanted to draw um, unimodal data, it might look something like this. Biomodal data might look something like this. It's worth pointing out, they don't have to be like exactly equal to each other, right? They might be off just by like a few scores, but if you can see there's like a big obvious peak here and there, you're like, okay, there's two modes. The classic example is the one we just looked at. It's heights. If you have a look at a population, right, and just overall just say, hey, let's look at everyone, even in this room, in this school, you're naturally going to get two peaks. And those two peaks represent a structure in the data that we actually haven't talked about. Why might there be, in a room like this or in a school like ours, two peaks to the data? Is that? Male female. Boys and girls, right? So you're like, okay, if you've got boys, they're generally taller. If you've got girls, they're generally shorter. So this is why, I mean, obviously there's outliers to both of those, um, but you often see this kind of thing, okay? Can someone give me a different example? So we just talked about heights, right? And by the way, it's super important that you mention these examples. They're an actual thing you have to learn in the syllabus. We've mentioned heights in a, um, you know, if we're not looking at gender, can someone think of another time or another place where you naturally end up getting two peaks in the data. Any thinking? Yeah, Josh? Uh, traffic, area. traffic, fantastic. Traffic is another classic example because throughout the day, there tend to be two peak times for when there are a lot of cars on the road. And you can tell me what those peak times are, right? Again, there's a structure in the data. What are the peaks? Like morning and afternoon. Yeah, morning commute, people going to work slash school and then afternoon, evening commute, people coming home. It is worth pointing out, traffic, I'll put like an asterisk on this one because we might come back to this one in a second, okay? I'm the kind of person who feels hungry all the time, so there's a bimodal set of data that comes with hunger, right? If you run a restaurant, if you run a restaurant and you look at the times that your restaurant is busy, when are the two peaks going to be? Lunch and dinner, right? So we might say meal times are going to increase the amount of business at a restaurant, assuming it's not one of those like 24 hour type things, okay? Even in a 24 hour restaurant, you're still gonna get peaks of some kind, okay? So bimodal data all the time. Now I think if I heard right it was said, but it might have been someone else, so I apologize if someone else said this. When there's more than two, when there's just like a whole bunch of different modes, we would say that's multimodal. So this is the third kind of modality that we need to have a look at. Now, again, they don't have to be exactly the same height, even if they're roughly 
right? You can clearly see there are some peaks. You will get these kinds of things occurring. So I'll give you an example and then I want to see if you can think of your own one, okay? If we went out to, I don't know, we live in this area. If we went to Cumberland Forest, right? Who's been to Cumberland Forest before, by the way? It's in West Penn Hills. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you haven't been, go there. It's beautiful, okay? If you go to Cumberland Forest or any forest for that matter and you start measuring the heights of plants, just every plant you see, you measure its height from the ground, okay? You're going to get a graph like this. I'm just going to write this, right? Tree heights or plant heights might be a better way to say it. Why do you think you will get a bunch of different peaks? Hmm. Now, Josh and Seb, you've been giving me some really good suggestions so far. I wonder if anyone else can help me out before I go to you guys. Rishi, what do you reckon? You can't really control the height of trees. <laughs> yeah. Plants don't, don't follow any rules, right? So you are going to get like a big spread like this. So there's not a behavior, I guess, that comes with it. However, that, while it's true, doesn't account for why there are peaks because they like could just be random, right? It could just be like pretty even. Josh, what do you think? Uh, different species of plants don't grow beyond certain heights. Nice, okay. I mean, I, I'm biased because I went to an agricultural school, but come on people, you all study a little bit of agriculture. If you've got a br uh, sort of, I was gonna say branch, wrong word. If you've got like a little bracket of heights in here, right, that all cluster around a certain height, there's like a mode in there, they're probably a certain kind of plant, right? Like grasses are gonna grow up to a certain height and then no more, they'll stop. Right? And then you can see, you just look out the window, you can see some of the gum trees, different kinds of grevilleas, whatever, okay? They're gonna represent each of these different, I give up on this one, each of these different modes, okay? So you got species. Can you give me another one? Another time where you get multimodal data. Hmm. This one's a bit trickier, isn't it? Well, yeah, what do you reckon? Ages. Say it again. Age. Age? What makes you think that? I'm just, or anyone. Like, why might that be something that we include in here? Why might we get brackets of ages? Yeah, what do you think? Okay, so for example, if you have a think about, have you guys heard of baby boomers, right? You're like, okay, boomer, right? Why was there a mode of people born around 1945, 1946? Do you guys know what made the baby boom actually happen? Really? No? 1945? How many people study history in this room? Okay, 1945 was the end of World War II, right? And World War II was really like the second part of World War I. So you had these decades, 1914 to 1918 was World War I, 1939 to 1945 was World War II. This whole part in the middle, right? There was scarcity, there was concern about safety, all that kind of thing. There just were less children born. And then there was a boom. Right? Now there are other things that cause booms as well, so you will get a bunch of these, and they're kind of, there's not just two throughout history, there can be any number of them. Yes, yeah? so I think it's a really good pick. Um, I put an asterisk on this one, over here, right? I actually think depending on how closely you look at the data, you could potentially put it in here. Can you think of more than just two things that would make the traffic spike during a day? Accidents. Okay, so you're gonna get like, there's, there's a, in fact, r this morning, um, there is a big traffic jam on the Sydney Harbour Bridge because there was like a three car crash, really sad, okay? So that's gonna happen. But I even thought of it as you guys were telling it to me, right? In the morning, it's very likely you guys will go to school at the same time as people go to work. But in the afternoon, I mean, what time do you guys get out of here? Three o'clock. Do most like office workers finish at three o'clock? Not unless they're very, very lucky, right? Most of them finish at five. So you're actually gonna get a different distinct peak here. Does this make sense? You can see how multimodal data appears. Any questions on that? Is that making sense? Okay, and we're gonna have a think about, oh yeah, Josh. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So you can see, um, there is this blurriness to thinking about statistics. You know when we were having a look at what makes an outlier? One and a half interquartile ranges? two and a half standard deviations. With modes, I sort of mentioned to you, like these don't have to be at the same height. There's a blurriness to thinking about statistics that doesn't exist in a lot of areas of mathematics. Fun fact, if you go to uni, the people who study statistics, statisticians, and the people who study mathematics, they often have very little to do with each other because it's a whole different kind of thinking here. It's like, is it this one or that one? Uh, kind of depends on us, okay? One last question before we go into shape, yeah. Hmm. Is there a mathematical definition to, you're talking about like how, like what's our threshold for how close they have to be? The short answer is no. 
Nope. <laughs> um, we will have a look. I mean, this is tricky, right? Because then you're like, oh, do we have to just rely on human beings saying like, it looks kind of like this? Um, no, we can come up with rules, but no rule is gonna be hard and fast and will apply to all data. Because all of these forms of data we were just having a look at have different reasons, different amounts of randomness and that kind of thing, okay?